Hey guys, how's it going? So Benjamin and I are out this morning getting ready to plant all of our vine crops. So pumpkins, winter squash, uh, cucumbers, cantaloupe, muskmelons, and watermelon. So this is where they're all going. I've got room for 32 squash and pumpkins in this bigger section and then kind of where it gets skinnier up there, we have room for eight melons all of which I have on a separate zone so I can water them differently. One thing I learned from our space last year, because you know we just kind of threw everything out there, was that I could not water my pumpkins and watermelon on the same zone because watermelon require so much less water, especially later on in the season. And if you water them at the same rate as pumpkins, oftentimes you get really watery fruit um, because you want to start cutting the water off to those watermelon vines after they've set their fruit and they've started to ripen so that the sugars condense in the fruit and you don't have that watery flavor so anyway this year when we got the space ready I knew I had to figure out the, a way to separate the two of them so I think we've got it semi dialed in I'm not really sure I mean every year you learn something new um, I've also got cucumbers and zucchini both of which I don't plant a ton of and I'm gonna pop those in different spots in the garden like I've got room at the end of the sweet pea rows which are just now starting to stool out and grow <laughs> they just kind of sat there poor things were so battered from the wind it took them forever to rebound but I've got room at the end of those rows for a couple of bush cucumbers and then I've got room at the end of our let's see at the end of the gladiolus row and the onion row over there for zucchini excellent job washing the gator bud Oh it is all muddy, yep. That, that's the name of the game, isn't it? So let me show you what we've got here. What I intend to do is basically what I did last year. I'm going to amend each planting site with a little bit of compost, a little bit of biotone starter fertilizer. I do have a few plants, which I typically don't do for any vine crop, but I had these left over from another project I worked on earlier this week in a different garden. So I thought I would use those up. So like I've got a couple of honeydew, uh, there's one ambrosia melon, uh, green zucchini, Hale's Best Cantaloupe. Oops, water in the gator. No good, baby. Got to keep it away from the seeds, okay? And a couple of bush cucumbers right here. I've also got some steaks. That's really important, the ID steaks. Nice big ones that can stick way out of the ground that we can actually see this year. And I've got a list of everything I intend to plant. And then these are all my seeds. So I've actually got a lot of seeds for pumpkins and squash in particular. And so I spent a little time going through my list knowing I had just 32 spots to plant in. And I kind of um, whittled it down to the varieties that I really wanted to grow. So I kind of created a list so that I could quickly find the seeds that I needed this morning. And I'm going to write out all my labels prior to planting so they're just ready to go before my hands get all dirty. Um, anyway, let me show you the list really quick. And I think maybe at the end of this video, kind of like with our Dahlia video, maybe we'll do a little slideshow of pictures of all the things that we planted today um, because it's always nice. It's kind of like looking at seed packets. Like seed packets are what sell varieties to me anyway. Like seeing beautiful pictures pictures of flowers or beautiful pumpkins or squash or whatever um, makes me inspired to grow them. So anyway, maybe we'll do that at the end. Let's see this morning I just went through and squash pumpkins, 32 of them, some of which I'm going to plant two of, like Jack D. Littles. Those are for Benjamin. He said that mama's going to plant big pumpkins and he's going to plant itty bitty pumpkins. Sugar pie pumpkins, they store really well um, and I, I really like them. They're tasty. So I'm going to do two hills of that. And then we've got our cantaloupe and musk melon. So I have room, I think, for four of those. And then I'm gonna tuck the Hale's Best plant somewhere. And then we've got the watermelon here. Sugar babies were the best out of all the watermelon I grew last year. So I'm gonna do two hills of those. And then cucumber and zucchini. And other than just, you know, preparing the site where you're gonna plant your stuff, you know, with some starter fertilizer compost, making sure you have consistent irrigation, you've got a plant identification stake. There's really not a lot to this project. It's just time getting it done. Uh, when I'm planting both uh, melons and pumpkins, most of these seeds need to be planted about a half inch deep. Um, just verify that information off the back of your seed packet or Google search it based on the variety you have, but typically a half inch is about good. Um, I go usually fairly heavy. I do about like three to five seeds per hill, and then you can thin them later if you want to or not. Um, but I like to make sure I've got a really good stand, you know, just in case something happens. And it's just been such a weird year in terms of wind out here that I want to just kind of almost guarantee that I'll have something out here. Are you going to make some mud pies, Benjamin? Looks like you're preparing for it. Okay, so let's prep our identification stakes first. Look at that. That is a thing of beauty right there. 
So now I'm going to show you close up how I plant a hill of um, squash or pumpkins. I'm not sure which one I'm going to pull out first, but it'll be pretty much the same for every single one. So we'll get up close and then I'll probably speed up the rest of the process. I did notice that this zone did water this morning, so I'm going to be planting in wet soil, which should be a real treat. <laughs> so you can see where the emitter is, it's all wet. And the reason why it runs is so it can water this pot right here. Anyway, let me go real quick over our watering system before we then get in close. So this is where the zone connects right here. So ignore this, this is actually a regular hose. So the tube runs over and connects to one of our zones. And then we just created a giant grid right here. And I've got everything spaced about seven and a half feet apart, which is better than the six feet that I had last year. It's still probably pushing it. Um, but we did fine last year and I really wanted to maximize this space. So anyway, that's what I went with. And so what I've got going is I've got them spaced like four on this row and then five, four, five, four, five, and so forth so that I can kind of bounce them. Like there's a site here for planting and then a site here and then here and then here so that they can kind of um, zigzag it fits a little bit better. Um, but we just put a one gallon per hour emitter. Oh, it's still going right now that one gallon per hour emitter at each planting site. So I'm just going to basically be planting right in front of each emitter, uh, which is quite perfect. It's very efficient for watering. And you know what? I'm looking at this and I think we only have 31 planting sites. So I'm going to have to go down one on either the sugar pie or the Jack B. Little. Probably the Jack B. Little. And the reason for that, instead of going five, four, five, four, five, four, five, we went four, five, four, five, four, five. Anyway, yeah. So we did more rows with four than with five. And then this right here is our melon area. And there's uh, four per row, so eight total. So I guess let's start with this one, winter luxury. Oh, this is gonna be a fun process. <laughs> oh, that was planning at its finest right there. Go with about five seeds. And cover them over with a half inch of soil. And our identification. And that's how I'm gonna do it. One down, a whole bunch more to go. where each hill is planted based on where the dark spot of compost is. Now I didn't plant in any sort of order, not alphabetically or anything like that. So I am gonna walk through and write down where I put each variety because even though I went with longer stakes this year, they are a little taller than last year's. They'll still get engulfed by the vines and I won't be able to tell what is planted where. So having it written down is really handy I find. This is the most satisfying part of the garden to plant because it, it doesn't take very long at all. Like it took me 30 minutes to plant all of these. And I know this whole rectangle is gonna be full. As opposed to all the other ones, I mean, it just so many different crops and so many different planting times, it takes a lot longer to get those all buttoned up. Now I did have to put in three inline valves. We realized, Erin came out here and realized that this whole zone was stuck on. So I don't know how long it had actually been watering. But unless I put this valve in, which I have currently shut off, it was gonna keep on watering. So we gotta figure out what's going on in here. It's probably something easy. But I did the same thing up here, let me show you. So in my melon section here, I realized it was actually connected. It's all one zone, see how it's connected right here? I meant to do two zones, but it's super easy fix. I kept all of my cantaloupe, so I've got four cantaloupe and musk melon. I kept those connected to the pumpkins because those can take the same amount of water. But I have two inline valves one here and one on the other side so that I can turn both valves off. Later on in the season, I can come in and just turn off the water to my watermelon. So there's four watermelons planted in here. 
and that way they'll get uh, less water than the rest and I think we'll have better melons and I did get several good melons I think I got over a hundred watermelon and cantaloupe from our space last year which was crazy and it was amazing I still had some on the vine I didn't even count um, that we weren't able to get to but some of them were really good and some of them were a little bit watery so I'm kind of hoping that this is helpful I planted so I planted eight this year I planted 12 hills last year so I went down by four and then we planted 30 what was it in the end 31 hills of squash and pumpkins and last year I think I planted 48 so that went down quite a bit but honestly like I don't need any more than what we just planted today this is gonna be amazing okay on the end of our sweet pea rows that's where I put the bush cucumbers those are only supposed to take up a few square feet so I figured well I have this little end section which I did plant my extra artichokes in one of which I dug up from here and moved to a spot where one of them wasn't doing very well and I replaced it. And the other one, I think it got eaten by something. I'm not sure what though, because nothing else in this garden has been eaten by anything. Anyway, um, kind of perfect because there's water coming to this area. I needed to cap the row with something. Um, so that'll be perfect. And then the zucchini went right over here. It's starting to look really good. Zucchini came right at the end of the pepper plants. I'm only doing one zucchini because that's all we need. And that'll fill in this space here. And then the rest of the row, I can work on planting some other things. And right over here is the Hale's Best cantaloupe. So right here, this was just an effort to use up the plants that I had bought for my project earlier this week. Um, the gladiolus, is, they're only planted to right. See this indentation, like somewhere in there. I can't tell on the camera screen, it's too bright out here. Anyway, the glads only come to about here. So I had the rest of this row. So I just popped the cantaloupe in there. I might regret it because I know it's gonna take up a ton of space. So I'm gonna to try to encourage it to come this way. Same over here. I had this uh, little space at the end of my onion row here, which is looking fantastic. Um, but we'll let that just fill in that space. Let me show you the honeyberries. I've been eating them. So check this out. I've already eaten, I don't know, 10 or 15 off this plant. I mean, it's not bearing a ton, but it's got, it's got a few that are ripening up and a ton of little ones. They bloom and bear on old growth. Um, so all of the berries are kind of in this bottom part of the shrub, which is actually great because I guess the birds really like to eat these. You normally have to net them. You know, as I was eating more and more of these, what I would describe them as is huckleberry. They remind me more of a huckleberry than they do of anything else. I mean, um, you know, people say they are a mix between a raspberry, blackberry, um, whatever, I can't really remember. Um, and maybe, I, I don't know, I hadn't had that many in the past to really decide and it's been years since I tried. But yeah, the more I'm eating them, the more they remind me of a huckleberry and I'm super happy to have them here. Like I kind of want to get more of these because they're so tough and they're a pretty little shrub. This one's the honey bunch. The other one is sugar pie, the one right there. I haven't eaten any off that bush yet. No, I don't see any on this one. Oh, one right here. Whoa, whoa, look at that. That is a huge berry. It's still a little firm though. I'm gonna wait on that. So at this point, all we have to do is make sure to keep, especially the seeds, moist until they germinate. Um, and then we do keep them fairly moist until they put on some growth and then we can kind of start backing off. Um, but that's the most important thing. You can't get them wet and then let them dry out because um, you'll probably lose your germination if that happens. Uh, the plants will just keep moist as well. I typically, for vine crops, the only reason why I'm putting plants in the ground is because I had extra. I typically only plant seeds because plants seem to kind of you know they they sit there that's a little bit of transplant shock maybe but they sit there forever and if you planted a plant to one of the vine crops and seeds right next to it it's likely that those seeds would germinate start growing and take off before your plant ever does anything um, so I feel like planting by seed for vine crops for us because we do have a long season um, works out really well if you have a short season planting with plants is probably a good idea especially especially for those like winter squash and pumpkins that take a really long time to mature it might save you a little bit of time I also feel like starting the seeds inside for me is a total waste of growing grow light space I would rather start other things and start the seeds straight out in the ground um, so anyway we will be updating you on this whole space as it progresses uh, it's been such a fun season so far and honestly like I feel like I even still a little bit late I could have had these seeds in the ground probably I don't know three weeks ago had I 
had my act together. We've had a lot going on though. Um, but last year I was planting these like mid to late June. So I think I'm ahead of the game. Um, we might even get some better color on some of our squash because I don't think some of them ripened quite as much as I would have liked them to ripen. So anyway, at this point, we will put a little slideshow of all the varieties that we put in the ground today so you can see what they are gonna look like hopefully for us at the end of the season. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.